This video is an introduction to the characteristics of living things. Now there are eight characteristics altogether that you need to be aware of. This video will act as an introduction to the first four. One of the things I want to stress with you at this point is that this list are traits that all living things share. They are not requirements that living things have to survive. So oftentimes when we talk about this one in class for the first time, I'll ask people, what are the characteristics of living things? And I'll get answers like, all living things need to eat or they need water. And those are things, or those are characteristics, I guess, that living things require, or maybe they're necessities that, that living things require. Whereas this list is going to be things that all living things have in common, that there are uh, commonalities that they all draw from. So we'll begin this list and we'll work our way through our first four characteristics that all living things share. Uh, as we work our way through it, you'll see how this is different than requirements that living things have for their survival. So the first major one that we'll talk about is the idea that all living things are made of one or more than one cell. So if we look at this particular example, we've got plant cells over here. Now, plants are made up of multiple cells. Plants, uh, plant cells have chlorophyll inside of them, which is the thing that actually gives them their green pigment. So you can see this in this image, that there are these green pieces inside of the plant cells. Those are the things that actually give plants their green coloration. Uh, same kind of thing for animal cells. Some of them are pigmented, uh, others are not. So uh, this particular example are animal cells that have some red pigmentation to them. So you can see them a little bit better. This piece in the center is called the nucleus. That's something that we'll talk about more when we get to our chapter on cells. Uh, but something to keep in mind is, as it says in the title, all living things are made of one or more cells. So there are some living things that are single-celled. Uh, protists are a common example of this. They're very tiny single-celled organisms. We'll actually look at them later on this year in some pond water samples that we'll examine. Our next characteristic of living things is that all living things display some kind of organization. So even those single-celled organisms that we talked about in the last slide, they're going to have organelles or like little parts of their cells that work together in order to provide organization for them. If you think of more complicated things like multicellular organisms like us, we have many different systems that work together in order to form our living bodies and in order to allow us to accomplish all the tasks and all the things that we do during the day. So you think about your circulatory system and how that works together to supply your entire body with oxygen and other nutrients. You know, your nervous system, which allows your brain to control all of your functions. There are even things in here that bypass your brain. So think about, you know, if you touch a hot stove, you're going to have a reaction to, to pull away, to, to jerk away from that surface. And that's part of your nervous system that functions even by bypassing uh, your brain on that one. Uh, so your respiratory system used for breathing, you know, your digestive system to break down your food, your skeletal system, which a lot of people kind of forget about, but your skeletal system, obviously, very important just for movement, and then your muscular system. So these two, the muscular and skeletal system, are, are obviously tied very closely together. But all living things are going to display some type of organization internally, whether it's a complicated system like we have or something very simple like the single-celled organisms have. The next one is the example of growth and development, and this one is often confused with another characteristic that we'll talk about later on that involves living things adapting and changing over time. One of the things I'm going to stress with you, and we'll add something to this one, is that this growth and development happens within one organism's lifetime. form quite so well there. So to give you an example of what we're talking about with this one, we've got a frog over here. So as many of you I'm sure are well aware, frogs start off as these little teeny tiny gel-like eggs. So eventually those eggs will hatch into very small tadpoles. There's a period of growth and development that the frog goes through as a tadpole where it actually looks much more like a fish than a frog. Then eventually, as it's getting closer to the adult stage, it becomes more frog-like, and its tail becomes much shorter. At this point, it is uh, more terrestrial, so it can come up on land as well as staying in the water. And then eventually, you end up with your adult frog at the bottom. 
So what we're talking about here is growth and development, and again, this is occurring within one organism's lifetime. So this is a short period of change. We will talk about longer, more complex changes that happen over many lifetimes. Uh, that's going to be more of the, ad the idea of adaptation and evolution, which we'll get to in the second video. The last major one that we'll talk about here is the, the concept of reproduction. So all living things have to reproduce. As we get the, the cute sort of mommy and, and baby pictures, right? And uh, if this didn't happen, if we didn't have reproduction taking place, then you would very quickly run out of living things. Uh, you'll see later on in the year that this step of reproduction is very closely tied to the changes that allow for adaptations and, and eventually evolution. We'll also go through the genetic requirements that take place during the process of reproduction. So just to summarize what we talked about in this one, we've got the first four characteristics of living things, we've got that all living things are made of cells, we've got that they display some type of organization, doesn't necessarily have to be as complex as what we have. All living things grow and, de uh, grow and develop within one single lifetime, and then all living things reproduce and pass on traits to that next generation. So thank you for watching, and as always, make sure you answer the questions at the end of the video. Thank you.